Welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this series from the Wapiti and the Moose. We're wrapping it up completely, putting the bow on it, um, reading out these moose before we move on to the white tail, and uh, we'll have a week off or so. Um, but it's EJ Herrick again. What a champion. Um, 1934, 7 by 6 on this one. Seaforth Valley, Dusky Sound, his creek, Herrick, Herrick Creek. Uh, 29 and 1 8 by 28 and 3 8. How did that compare? Yeah, similar to PJ Lies one. Um, 33 spread, so that's the smallest. Uh, the beams, though, they're, I oh know they're smaller, they were in the sixes. Yeah, 5 5 and 3 8 by 5 and 3 8. And then the coronet, 7 and 5 8 by 7 and 5 8. So, yeah. Not not the same. Uh, brow palmations thirteen and six by fourteen and six. Main palmations seventeen and three eighths by seventeen and five eighths. Width of the main palmation six and four eighths by six and four eighths. Main palmation with points thirteen and one eighth and thirteen and two eighths. The number of points being seven and six, total of twelve. So, hey, that's thirteen. Oh, of course, doubling the smallest side. Yeah, overall there's 13 points, but the score gives it 12. So, the most points out of these moose, but a uh, score of 2 to 9 and 7 eighths. So, this second Herrick Trophy was taken in 1934. At a time, the hunter was 56 years of age. Still time, eh? Once again, Herrick was accompanied by the incomparable Jim Muir, of course. On this occasion, the two men experienced many hardships not uncommon with the environs of Western Fiordland. Miserable weather, so typical of the area, made both travel and camping out extremely uncomfortable. After spending almost a month under such conditions, enduring one of the most inhospitable and wettest areas within a temperate zone in the world, Herrick at last secured his second trophy. Once again, it was poor in comparison to what could be taken in Europe, Asia or North America, but certainly a novelty here in New Zealand. Near the conclusion of their trip, it was decided to try and hunt over a stream which today bears Herrick's name. Waiting until the schooner which was to take them back to civilization finally arrived to pick them up, Herrick influenced the skipper to take them around to Wet Jacket Arm and to the mouth of the selected stream. There in the bush... Upstream from a lake, Herrick secured his second bull in heavy cover. Awesome. So there we go. Put a bow on it. The Wapiti and the Moose. Um, I see you can get them from the NZDA website. Um, must get my hands on all the others. Of course, as I said, I've got uh, Samba, Rusa and Whitetail. And we'll get into the White Tales in a week or so. Um, awesome stories in, in behind these trophies and um, the species and their introduction to New Zealand. Also, how they're sort of recognised and, and looked after and maintained and farmed and hunted and protected in their native lands. So, yeah, get onto the NZDA website, bookstore, and get your hands on a copy of the big game records and proceeds from the purchase of those books goes to the New Zealand Deer Stalkers Association Heritage Trust, of course, um, part of the Heritage Museum down there in Wellington. So I must get myself down to Wellington and check it out, um, check out some of the trophies. Hopefully they're bringing that Nitz Wapiti trophy with them again to the Sicker Show. Um, that's going to be a hell of a time there at the end of October. Um, I'll be there wearing the t-shirt and um, hopefully doing a few interviews with a few people within the hunting industry. Um, if you see me there, say hello, say good day, and uh, shake shake hands and press the flesh, so to speak. Um, it's going to be a great weekend up there at Mystery Creek. So until next time, when we bring you the white tail, 165 inches and above um, with them. I think there's 11 trophies from the white tail. Until then... Make sure you subscribe to the Stag Raw, and uh, yeah, catch you there. Now, this is from New Zealand Big Game Records Series, Volume 2. It's called The Wapiti and the Moose. Uh, 
uh, written and compiled for the New Zealand Deer Stalkers Association, incorporated by D. Bruce Banwell. And we're able to do this with permission from the Helicon Press, a division of Helicon Publishing Limited. And um, this was copyrighted in 2001, D. Bruce Banwell, first published 2001, all rights reserved. And they've given us permission to do this little series, The 400 Club. <laughs> 